We are back with another unboxing. Kitty sent us their brand new printer, the Q1 Pro. I don't really know anything about it, so let's check it out. Ugh. So I do have the X-Max 3, and I think that's a pretty good printer. If you're looking for a large format printer, I would definitely check that one out. Again, I don't really know anything about this printer. I think it's a direct competition with like the K1C and like the P1S. So let's open it up and take a look. Okay, Q1 Pro, quick start guide. So my only real complaint with the X-Max 3 was that big giant thing on the back. So I really hope they got rid of that, got rid of that on this one. I don't see it in here yet. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I think they still have it. Okay, here it is. I don't see anything else in there. Oh, stopwatch, see how long this takes me to print a Benchy, or like get to the point of printing a Benchy. Okay, let's just take all this stuff out of here. Ooh, so I think they did get rid of the little thing on the back. A little basic toolkit. I don't see an extra nozzle in here. Power cord, everyone's favorite glue stick. No extra hot end yet, but free flash drive. Um, Kitty did send this to me, full disclosure, no contract, no pay, I can say whatever I want. I think that's everything. I, I don't know what this cost. I would assume around five, $600. I'll figure all the specs out in a minute. Again, I don't really know anything about it. I just like their last printer and then they sent me like a sheet on roughly the information on it. At the time, they couldn't really say a whole lot. All right, rip this open. So I really wanted to do live unboxings, but my internet out here is not good enough. You can check out my last live unboxing. It was okay. So we'll just do it this way. It's a little easier for me to edit it anyways. And instead of being an hour long, I could be like 15, 20 minutes. Okay, let's see how it looks. Brief interruption. At the time of filming this video, I did not know how much this printer would cost. The printer is gonna be $5.99, which is right in line with all the other printers in this size and category. But right now with the new launch, Kitty's gonna let it go for $470. I think that's a steal for this printer. And if you wanna take advantage of that, there's a link down in the description. I'll also pin the first comment. And then we do get a small kickback as it is an affiliate link at no cost to you. So it's a great way to support the channel. But either way, we just appreciate you all watching. If you don't use our links, that's totally fine. Just leave a like and a comment and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So it doesn't look bad. The X-Max 3 is just a big giant machine. I don't think it looks the best. Um, although the looks don't matter as long as it prints good, but some of these new printers are looking pretty fancy like spaceships and these almost look like microwaves. Not that it's bad as long as it prints good, but this one's not looking too bad so far. All right, the top is plastic. The benefit of plastic is it does not break. Okay, so initial thoughts, it doesn't look bad. So it does have that like spaceship vibe. Doesn't look the worst. We have a nice gold PEI sheet here, double-sided, I like that. It's such a waste when they're not double-sided. Okay, another thing here. I really like when they have the, the alignment in here so you're not on here trying to wrestle it on this magnet. And this one isn't bad. Whoopsie, nope, it's a little off. So these should be a little bit higher or have them little notches there so you can just drop this thing in place. It's just one of those things where you shouldn't have to think about it. There we go. I should probably open up the user manual and see what that has to say. That's no fun, huh? Like all these printers, you gotta remove a few screws. Okay, so we're going pretty smooth here. 
Looks like a pretty easy setup. What's that? Take off. Oh, interesting. You got a little nozzle cleaner on there. That's what these little that's what these little pads are for. There's a, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll show you in a second. But there's a little nozzle cleaner. I don't know what that says. Is this a poop shoot? Is this a poop shoot like bamboo? I think it's a poop shoot. Interesting. Okay, I'm intrigued. Again, I don't really know anything about this printer. Uh, that's probably, uh, I mean, that's definitely on me, but I thought it'd be more exciting if we learned together. Okay, so yeah, there's these little pads in here. These, they're like felt, like you put on the bottom of a, like a, like a chair on a hardwood floor. So this is what's going to clean the nozzle. Interest. Oh, missed a zip tie. That's why it won't come forward. Okay, so so far I'm very intrigued. Let's see how this display looks. I'm assuming this is going to look just like the X-Max 3. <laughs> this is the included filament. You could probably print two benches with this. So I'm not even going to... I guess I'll... I guess we'll print the Benji with this just for sake of the printer. Up oh, first, make sure it's on 220 or 110. Where is that? Uh, usually there's a switch to dictate whether it's 110 or 220. So I guess this is a good time to check out the manual. Okay, it doesn't say, so we're just going to plug it in and hope for the best here. Okay, we're booting up. Please wait. Let's bring you in a little closer here. Four screws. You got like a wire here sticking up. I don't know what that's about. Poop tube is ex intriguing. I don't really see. Oh, we have a camera. There is a built in camera. Okay, intriguing. We have a camera and a poop shoot. We are doing English. Remove all ties. Almost positive I removed all ties. Remove the four screws, we did that. About moving platform, please make sure the platform is clean and unlocked. Uh, sure thing. Keep pushing the filament into the filament Reynolds sensor until extruded. PLA Rapido Black. That's it, that's how it goes on there. Okay, so goes off the side like that, I think. Most likely I'll just run a filament dryer off the side of this anyway, just because, I don't know, but it's, it's nice it's not on the back. I'm not going to really complain too much about it. This is, I wish they would have just gave me a half roll. Okay. Keep pushing the filament into the filament run-on sensor until you reach the extruder. Done. Okay, setting nozzle temp. Heating up pretty quick. We're already at 150, 200. Kitty Tech Q1 Pro. I'm excited. I don't know. I don't really have high hopes or low hopes. All right, f temp reach. That was pretty quick. I didn't time it, but that was pretty quick. Ensure the filament is in the extruder. Click the button for loading filament until filament comes out the nozzle. Okay, we got a little bit coming out. Just want to make sure it's sucking it in. Oh, she got it. All right. I just want to make sure it's actually in there because sometimes they actually test these and there'll be a little schmutz in there to begin with. Congratulations, you're finished. And then it says, please do the input shaping. I feel like it should just run me through that. You know what I'm saying? I shouldn't have to go in here and click how to do all this. Please make sure there are no foreign objects on the nozzle. A little bit of poop on there. So input shaping. What's nice about this not being live is I can just skip all this. So you don't got to watch this thing move around for 10 minutes. So first things I've noticed, we got a camera up here. We got a felt wiper back there. It almost looks like felt wiper with like what it looks like a poop shoot. Okay. 
And then we also have what appears to be a chamber heater down there. So before I couldn't find the switch to switch it to 220, <laughs> the input power of the machine is 110. So yeah, read the labels. I would love to see how thick that plate is because on the K1 and K1 Max, the, the plate's pretty thin. It's like a little over an eighth inch. And on the Kitty X Max 3, it's just over a quarter inch. So I'm assuming this one has a thicker plate too. And what's nice about the thicker plate is it doesn't warp and get all uneven as bad. Oh, this thing is just a vibrating up a storm. But just looking at the manual here, we have an automatic cleaning nozzle device, which is that little wiper back there we saw. It does have a chamber heater. And then there's a filament tangle detection device. That would be key. I don't know if I've seen a printer with that yet. Because I see, I, I've never had it happen, but I've seen people in the forums where they, you put the spool in there and it ends up getting tangled and the print stops, but the filament sensor doesn't go off because it's a tangle, but it's not able to extrude that filament. Or they forget to take the little, little notch out of the end of the spool and it'll do the same exact thing. So that's pretty cool. I don't know how well it works, but we will see. Printing speed 250 to 500 millimeters a second, acceleration 20,000, right on pace with all the other. Extruder gear, hardened steel. I don't know if this has a hardened nozzle. Nozzle, bimetal nozzle. Slicers, awesome. So Kitty Slicer, and I use Orca now. So they do have, a, they, hopefully they have an Orca profile in there. This is a brand new printer, so. And then for sensors, we have filament tangle detection, filament runout sensor, automatic leveling, Reynolds resin, resonance compensation, which is like the, my brain is not working right now. The K1 Max struggled with it. The VFAs, VFAs. Uh, USB ports on the top, which isn't my favorite, but I don't really use the USBs anyway, because I just sent everything via Wi-Fi with the Orca slicer or Kitty slicer. So yeah, that don't say much. So I don't know what's going on here, but it says input shaping completed. But it's not doing anything. Oh, oh shit. So it was just thinking and I tapped it and I'm doing the input shaping again. Wonderful. <clears throat> okay, so now we're preheating the bed and uh, doing the auto bed leveling. There's also some other feature in here. Please do not use the platform calibration function before, before consulting with after sales support or logging into official wiki to learn how to use it. So I don't know what that is, but uh, we'll check that out after this video. Platform calibration. Also, I'm not sure, but it does, does look like you have the ability to like semi adjust the bed. Cause my biggest, com another complaint I have about the K1C and the K1 line is you can't, you can't adjust it. You have to like shim it or play with the rods. I just, just give me a knob. Just let me, let me adjust it and let the bed level and do the rest. But you can't. This one looks like you can, but I don't want to touch anything right now. It's smart that it heats up the bed and lets it like warm up for a bit before you just go and do the auto bed leveling. It has the same type of sensor as the X Max 3 does. It's not the little, ooh. Oop, it's gonna do the poop shoot. It looks similar to bamboos with the little roller wheel thing and then the little poop shoot on there. So I'm curious to see if it's gonna like purge itself and do all that. Rubbing it on the little felt pad. Interesting. It looks kind of loose. Unless it's supposed to have that give, I don't know. Oh, it, it moves? Does it have a little motor on it? I think it has a motor and goes in and out. Oh, it does! Interesting, there's a little motor on there. Right there, it goes in and out. Okay, okay, fascinating. So it says only needs 52 seconds to heat from 20 Celsius to 220 Celsius. 
So we are officially 39 minutes in, but I ran the input shaping twice on accident just because I was impatient and tapping the screen and it ran it again. So we're doing pretty good though. Okay, so we are officially starting the Benchy. I skipped the auto leveling on this one just because we literally just did it, so it should be fine. And then there's also in the pre-save files, there's a first layer test. So we're gonna print the Benchy and then we'll do that first layer test. And then I'll probably print something overnight just to, with a different kind of filament just to get it running. And I'll see if there's an Orca profile. That'd be wonderful if there was. So this says an 18 minute Benchy. We'll see how fast it actually goes. Okay, we are not printing here. All right, first print failed. Um, let's try to just extrude some filament out of here. Well, it's, de it's definitely hot. Okay, I don't know if this filament actually loaded. Like I said before, sometimes they run tests on these just to run the print so there'll be a little bit of filament in there. So when you're purging it, you gotta make sure it's the actual filament you're using. Oh, now she's pulling in. Yeah, I don't think I had that filament actually <clears throat> Loaded it in there properly. There we go, okay, we're good. Okay, I'll take the blame on that one. Okay, we're gonna run it again. So like these printers are easy to use now. <clears throat> like five years ago, these were a completely different ball game. But now, they have them so simple that they're relatively easy to use. But a majority of the problems I see in the forums are user error. Sure, the printers do mess up, you get duds, bad printers, that does happen. But a lot of the time it's people's First printer, and they just, like right now, if I didn't have that happen to me before, I'd be like, what's going on with this printer? It's not working. So now we're gonna try it again, and hopefully this Benchy prints, and it's not the printer, and it was just me. Confirm, okay. Let's try it again. The poop shoot's kinda cool. I'm kinda curious to learn more about that thing. So it rubs it on the little wheel like the bamboo, then it goes in the felt and then the motor pushes it in and out while it goes left and right. Okay, so this is the build plate on the Creality K1C and they added this little rubber nozzle cleaner. So I'm curious to see what's more efficient, this simple little nozzle cleaner or something back there with the motor. Is that gonna be better? Or is that one more thing that can possibly go wrong and fail? We will see. So that's looking at this a little closer. When it rubs on it, it moves it back, which is what pushes it. There's no actual motor. No pressure, better print. I guess I could have skipped the calibrations, huh? It's really, ooh, this says 13 minute Benchy now. A 13 minute Benchy with normal infill would be pretty impressive. Now it says 43 minutes. There's no way. So this did say 13 minutes, now it says 41 minutes. But it's, this thing is moving, so there's no, oh, now it says 38 minutes. So I don't know what's going on with that timer. And we're also, about an hour in. I, I figured I'd be able to do this in about an hour, which is kind of my unboxing setup time. It's looking good. Oh, there we go. So it's looking pretty good. I have high hopes here. It's hard to tell, but it looks like a normal amount of infill. I think some of these companies cheat and use less infill or like no walls and it just makes a fast benchy, but there needs to be like a standard. I should have actually timed this because I don't know if I trust this now that the the print time is jumping all over the place. Okay, friends. Okay, let me get you on this one here. We had the, remember I said the, it stopped and I'm like, oh no, what's going on? Filament entangled dis detected. So the filament tangled thing works. I unintentionally did this, I wasn't paying attention. Okay, uh, let me untangle this. <laughs> this is a mess. So it works though. Uh, that's exciting. Like, this is gonna save so much frustration for some people. I, I was just saying that, like, I never had this happen to me. Well, I did one time, but it was my fault when I loaded it. I was just a little sloppy. But here we go, friends. It works. Okay. So, the question now is, when I push start here, Will I be able to tell where that new layer line is? Because a lot of times when you run out of filament and replace the filament, you can, you can see where it started and stopped. It's never that noticeable, but you can tell. So I'm curious to see on this, on this bench, you're probably not gonna be able to tell, but. 
That's cool I had messed up and failed though. We got to test the filament tangle sensor. So this is probably heating up. Come on, resume. Oh, here we go. Little nozzle wiper driver going on here. Oh, there's a big string on there. Is it gonna get it off? Oh, it did get it off. See it back there? Impressive, I'm uh, I'm, no complaints. That was pretty cool. I draped it off the side here now because they, I, I hate, just give me a little fifth roll, not this tangled mess. Because this is probably like a $600 printer and you can't give me a half a roll. Okay, so, oh, there's poop in that, there's poop in that bucket, so it does purge. Let's get this out of here. This didn't make it down in there. See, it does move. Wonder how long these last. They gave me a pile of them. Back on track. Oh, I can see it. I can see the line where it started. Well, that sucks. Okay, so it says we're 20 minutes in. I don't think that's right. Maybe including my tangle, because this thing's moving pretty quick, but it's looking really good, minus the area there where I had the filament tangle. But messing around with this here, I love that you can just adjust the Z height, the speed, and the flow rate of this right in there. Yeah, almost done. I'll have to print another one and actually like stopwatch it. We're in hour 15 in. Okay, we're done. I'm curious to see what this says for a time readout because I don't think it was 21 minutes. Okay, let's pop this bad boy off of here. Let it cool down a minute, but. That's a good looking benchy, minus that area where the seam transition was. Here we go. Okay, so that's a good looking benchy. Look how smooth that is. And then that's where you can see here where that filament tangle sensor went off. But overall, I'm happy with that. Minus that, but the filament tangle sensor worked. I'd rather have a little not great looking area than the print completely failing. Okay, so let's do a first layer test. So what you can sh ah! So the, they need little tabs here to, so this drops in place better. It's just kind of annoying. I don't know what any of this stuff is. X, what does X mean? Thicker filament holder, that's useful. Okay, we're gonna do this first layer test and then we'll just let it run the bed leveling just because. I'll throw a different roll of PLA on here and then I'll print something overnight, like an eight hour print or something, just to see how that looks. If there's an Orca uh, profile. If not, I'll just use Kitty. The Kitty software's not that bad. We're also an hour and 21 in. So we'll say unboxing to Benchy with my screw ups. We'll just say an hour 10, which, is, which isn't that bad. So one thing I didn't mention was the print area. 240 by 240 by 240. This says 250 on here. But 240 is not bad. The bamboo is 256. So the bamboo is 256 and the K1C is 220 by 220. So it is a little bit bigger than the K1C and a little bit smaller than the bamboo. But I would say for most people, this is the size of printer you need. You don't need these big giant ones. They are nice, but a majority of what I print is just can fit on these normal size printers. Unless you're doing cosplay and you need to print the big helmets, these small ones are just fine. Okay, first layer's looking eh. I also didn't adjust the Z height or anything, so we'll do this first one and then I'll probably just do another first layer test just to kind of tune it in. But the bottom of the benchy looks just fine. We're doing the first layer test and over here you can see wasn't enough squoosh. And then we got to about the middle and I manually adjusted the Z here. And it's looking way better. But just looking underneath here, it looks like I do have the ability to adjust the corner slightly. And this little baby wrench fits on them. So overall it's looking pretty good. And if I do need to adjust it, I can, which is I would love to have the ability to do the micro adjustments than not be able to at all. I also have, I have no idea what kind of roll this is. It's some sort of PLA. It doesn't even say on here, but I had this from the X-Max 3 and I fed it in as it was printing, finishing up that little dangler I had. So let's check out this first layer. 
So right about here is when I <clears throat> manually adjusted the Z height and cheated it. And you can see back here, this looks great. And up here, not enough squoosh. So I almost just want to run another one to see what it looks like. And then if it's still not enough, I'll maybe adjust that knob down here. Okay, I went ahead and stopped it. <clears throat> I made the adjustments as it was printing. So you can see it was low, went the wrong way, and over here looking good. Same thing over here, it was starting to get low in this corner, I adjusted it, and we're looking good. So now I'm going to rerun it, and we should have a pretty dang perfect first layer. Okay, so we just finished up the third first layer test, and I think I got it practically perfect. I had to make one little adjustment, but it's close. Okay, so I, it was looking really good, looking a little low, and I made one more tiny adjustment here, but the rest of this is looking great. That's a good looking first layer. So let this cool down and then we'll peel this off of here. But again, that's the only low spot and you can see I adjusted it right about there. Okay, so that's the area that I adjusted. That is a good looking first layer. A little bit of schmutz in the middle there, but that's probably just from my, me touching the plate. But yeah, you can see where I adjusted it. Super happy with that. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna try another Benchy and see how fast this can print it. Okay, so it says an 18 minute Benchy on here, which is still good. That's not like it's bad. Actual print time, 18 minutes. With calibration, 22 and a half minutes. This says 21 minutes. Beautiful Benchy though. Benchy number two looks good. All right, it is the following day. I couldn't get Orca working, so I reached out to Kitty and then I got the profile loaded on my computer. So I got all that figured out. But last night I just printed the longest print that was already pre-saved on here and it was this uh, coin tower. Let's see how it looks. Okay, castle slide catcher. It was a four hour print. Oh, no supports. Uh, don't know what I'll do with this, but very nice looking print though. Uh, let's see if I can find a quarter. Works. So now that I got Orca running, I'll be shoving a bunch of film into this thing just to spend some time with it. I'm pretty excited about it. Again, I don't really know a whole lot about it yet or even what it's going to cost. I would assume five to six hundred dollars, but yeah, after I get about 100 hours or so through it, I'll probably put it up against the K1C and do like a head-to-head -head kind of video to see which one's better. Um, it's going to be pretty close. I got a little over 100 hours in the K1C, and then obviously I have like six hours into this thing. So yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.